On today's episode of Delusions of Automotive Grandeur, the guys talk about projects that didn't go as planned. Brent learns that double bagging O-rings does not work well with oil changes. Steven strips out the thermostat bolts, and Charlie learns that old Subarus had turbo oil line filters. Strap in. It's time for Dag Show. Welcome back, everybody. This is season two, episode two. Is that, is that what we're calling this? I think so. Cool. I, I'm, I'm down with that. That yeah. sounds great. I like that. And I, I don't know if anyone else has seen it, but we have Spotify like plays. We have YouTube plays. It's very exciting. We have Belgian fans. We have Belgian fans. So shout out to whoever is listening in Belgium. Um, Given they may have accidentally just they may have accidentally I mean, clicked on yeah. something. It's very well possible. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> well, I have, let's I have count no it. idea why. I'm, I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna discount it. Uh, yeah. Anywho, but they could end up being the uh, like the track owners at Spa, and they were so impressed by us, they're gonna yeah. Since COVID, they, they've heard you. They're inviting us there. They heard you talk about your dad's visit. Wait, which which one of the three of us would actually win a race at Spa with our cars as they are? I think Charlie would, right? Because he has the most power, and there's some long straightaways and things. Well, no one way to find out. I think I could take you at Monaco. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. And which? Hold on. Are you in the Fiesta? Or are you in the Mustang? Well, you have to wait till the day of the race. I'm just going to show. Oh up. well. No, it's going to be the Fiesta. Because it's going to show it, up in the. I'm going to show up in the Volvo just to troll you. The Fiesta has a spoiler. You can't race anything that doesn't have a spoiler. So. You can totally. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brent, do you it, have a spoiler? It has a spoiler. Yeah. yeah. It does? Okay. Yeah. Mo- I think most of our, our little hatchbacks have some spoiler these days for. Yeah, it just, for, you know, kind of blocks the rear window a little bit. Yeah. Actually, my Fiesta is so a backwards cool. hat for, for the car. Yep. My, my Fiesta is so poorly designed that just the standard arch of the glass in the back, not even the spoiler. Like if I'm 5'11", maybe slightly less, and I can't see more than 100 yards behind the car. <laughs> like I have to lean down to look further behind me. My goodness. Um, but okay, so wait, wait. So your car, Charlie, your car is a Mark 7 GTI and you've got the Club Sport spoiler on it. And the Club Sport is a real, is an actual like functional performance car. Yep. Um, so maybe... Of the three of us, your spoiler actually does something? De- debatable. I mean, I have not run it through a... I've truly added mine for looks. Uh, if it's functional, great. Um, you know, I know there is... I feel like there's always so much of the, the internet forum arguing of spoilers on front-wheel drive cars. Um, I don't care. It looks I good. I just love your honesty, Charlie. You're like, I did because it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, it's, you know, I'm not out here for anybody's scene points. Um, but yeah. The newest thing, Charlie, is uh, vortex generators in your trunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 what, that's what Brent did. In the trunk. I like that. In the trunk. I also like vortex generators in the trash. <laughs> mm-hmm. In the trash. Yes, especially when equipped on various... STIs and Civics. Some and of them came stock that way, though. Did that is really true. Look, if it came stock, I'm not going to fault it. Uh, you know, I'll say, look, someone someone thought it was a good idea. Um, but I'll say on most cars, especially the add-ons for fuel mileage that, that were popping up for, for ages ago, uh, nah, not cutting it. Did they not actually a- have... Like the vortex generators, did that actually come from Rally? Did anyone ever actually like intentionally do that? I can see it being in Rally just to like break up clumps of mud or something that stick in a certain spot. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Brent, you got this, or shall I take a stab at it? I would say no. Yeah, I'd say no. Because I mean, technically, they were um, well, at least the on the STI O six O seven. They had um, the rear roof spoiler, whatever you want to call it, where it was yeah, just a that. small little fin that went across. Yeah. All it was is over, I think it was supposed to be like over 80 miles an hour. It was actually when 
wind uh, wind tunnel tested or whatnot, where the air will actually go down through that and go through the bottom half of the spoiler overall uh, on the S. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. To I get mean, more downforce, more or yeah. less. Yeah. So you could you could go um like sort of bourgeoisie with uh well it's not really a hot hatch but we'll call it a hot hatch um that's a whole other conversation is a new beetle a hot hatch it does have a hatchback but anyway um the new beetles had the uh spoiler that would come up over 90 the turbo ones so i'm gonna th throw this out there disclaimer on the the beetle hot hatch is no it's not a hot hatch unless it's like extra modified like this and again if we're talking about hold on are we talking about the like ones that are like the semi the semicircle or are we talking about the like the newer, newer ones? ones. It's it's the older the original new beetle, like ninety nine oh, no. whatever. Oh not unless I had it, a turbo one, it was great fun. Nah, not unless it was like unless it was like the uh they had a few that were like oh, uh yeah. way souped up. Like if it, unless it, if it was a standard bog standard, non R line, non no, it's not how I forgot they made that one really expensive one. I think it was either was it Europe only or very like they made thirty of them for the U.S. and they were like sixty grand and they were all wheel drive or something like that. Yes, they. I can't remember the details on this one exactly, but they've made a few limited edition like hype. I would almost describe it like borderline hyper hash type mm -hmm. stuff where it was like, you know, it, it's truly the like design student project of like. Well, we got all these other part spins <laughs> product, like all these other parts available in the VW Audi Porsche catalog. Like, you want to just throw them at, throw them at a Beetle and see what works. And there was one Turbo Beetle that had like uh, colored inserts for the wheels, and that reminded me of those '80s shoes where you'd replace the little triangles on the side with a different. Oh color. yeah, yeah. That's like a. Brent, do you remember those from the '80s? Nope. Brent's eight. That's all right. I can't say that I remember anything from the 80s because, uh, yeah, too too young, but can uh, take away some of the 90s. But. I remember the 80s. There was even, Brent, there was even a time where, like, if you had the shoes with these little colored insert things that would go into them, um, and you had, like, the newest color insert that no one else had, you were, like, hot shit. And then um, also the uh, some shoes had zipper pouches. You could keep your lunch money in there. Yes, your lunch money, because that's how cool of a kid you were. <laughs> I was cool. Oh my God, I wasn't cool. Oh, that's all right. Hey man, I had He Man. I still have my He Man. I got my Castle of Grayskull. Oh man, why don't I have that set up here? That Why don't? Totally yeah, it'd be, it'd be a great background for you. I, I'm a, I am a, I'm a full-on adult now. I, I own a house, a lawnmower, a leaf blower. I need a Castle Grayskull on my wall from 1986. A and library with many leather-bound books. See, everyone's doing that. I, I, I saw someone commenting on that that like, every it seems like everyone who sets up their camera has books in the background. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I've got Hot Wheels and a camera. And a printer. There you go. That's all I got. Is and then really my kitchen. Printer? What's up? Is that, a fan is that a fancy printer? Is it really wide or is that just a camera? Yes, it's a photo printer. Can I have it? No. Thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to you, it's worth a thousand dollars. To me, that's three dollars. That's insulting, Charlie. Four dollars. Anyway. Anywho, um, on okay, top idea. I have an idea. What do you got? We have 30 seconds to go grab an unopened Hot Wheel and show it off to the camera. And it has to be a cool one. I have no Hot Wheels in my house. Oh, match, but don't you have all your stuff? Matchbox, wow. anything? Like no, man, that's how I work. Shit. I got I got one die cast at, at house. I can bring that. Okay, where you want? Go. All right. Be here back. <sighs> You hang tight. Entertain us, Brent. I know, right?
There you go. All right, so I'm going to start first. Um, Charlie's not back yet. Yeah, you know. But we can talk about him then. So, man, Volkswagens, no. I don't know. You know, Volkswagen GTIs, like, secretly viewers. I love GTIs and I love Joey's in particular. Yeah, Charlie, your car's great, yeah. Yeah, I like your car. I like GTIs. My little RS 4.0. This is the Christmas gift this year. So mm. I think, uh, not bad. Not, you know, I, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's a little Maisto, so not the highest quality, but still like my first like adult diecast, I guess. But that's I had, great. Yeah. Yeah. My dad used to, um, my dad got me an F40 in like 1988. That's that same kind of thing, like Baraggio or Brago or something. Mm -hmm. I still have that somewhere. It's got even that little stick that holds up the. Uh, I had a, I was going to say, I had a Testarossa. Uh, that was, I think, uh, this is a. Is it, 118th, maybe? I don't, yeah, that sounds right. Um, I had the smaller, I can't remember what the smaller scale is, um, like 140. Something like that. Some diecast person will probably be sad at me right now. Um, but yeah, I remember having a similar size one for for a Testarossa, and I always thought that was the coolest thing. For for the record, um, I, I just I have a distinction that none of you guys will ever match. Oh, um, I am the first person to injure myself while filming Delusions of Automotive Grandeur v vlog. Did you Did you just give yourself a paper? Yes, cut? when I ran to get my Matchbox slash. Oh my god. Car. Um, I ended up kicking my 1965 Mustang seats two by four wooden mount on the ground <laughs> that I used for my driving rig. And I was in immense oh, pain as I was running around the corner trying to find my, uh, my car. Brent, Brent aren't you, man. aren't you glad out. you didn't have to run around to find? If I no, I just had to turn around. Pissed. That was oh, it. Yeah. yeah. What'd you grab? Uh, Beersy. Nice, nice. Mm, if there's, hey, yeah. that's the same color yours used to be <laughs> charlie remember what? we used to get the color of his wrong every time oh yeah all the time <laughs> like it's gray right no dude it's black uh it was gray whatever <laughs> and this is blue so are you colorblind no, I, I'm think, I think we just found out. Even <laughs> I remember what color yours was. This actually explains I, so much more. I know it does. But suddenly, <laughs> Look at this the blue poster. Yeah. Oh yes, the 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 red Mustang. Yeah, right, I found yes. uh, I found the BRZ at uh, the Peterson one day and nice. had to pick it up because you know why not? That was my okay. best car. Brent, were you just yeah. name dropping a cool museum because you know Charlie and I don't have a cool museum? Yeah, because it's right down the road from me and I'm a member of it. So, yeah. you know, I can just show up anytime I want and just walk through it. Have you is gone that, on, the ones... on the vault collection yet? No. Peterson, no. is that the one that has the, um, the um, Bugatti that was in the lake? I don't think it's so. It's all like rusty and corroded and just sitting there. Unless it's down in the fault, I don't. Uh, no, I don't it was on think display. So. It may not be the Peterson. Maybe it'd be that other one that's like the Peterson. I can't remember what it is. They've done but a lot of this... work to rotate a bunch of them. Uh, very often. Awesome. Yeah, because I mean, any, even if you go like every two weeks, some of their collection is different. Yeah. Overall, they they change it out quite often. Um, overall. Yeah. All right. So my um my Hot Wheels slash Matchbox car is fairly unusual. Um, what did you bring? A Tesla. With Spaceman. Oh man. Oh. Oh, oh Musky. Yeah. Orbiting the sun now in space. I feel like I feel like you need to strap it to like a like a model, a model rocket. rocket. <laughs> yeah, and just like just go for it. Just send it. Like, Dude, that's a great idea for a segment for the show. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I feel like that's a good like Instagram story, and that's about it. There's not a whole lot to talk about. It's just like, no, I think it's perfect, Charlie. I mean, like, I don't know how much more uh, rockets cost anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know. You could get a starter set for like under fifty bucks. We may have to try to replicate that. Um, I would. Can you find another one of those? I think I'd like to. I'd like to keep one unopened, but you know. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I was just, saying, keep, so, just keep so, one, and then. 
It's what eBay's for. Just Send the other one off. Someone's open theirs and. Oh, this is a great idea. Yep. And then other news, Tesla actually made it over a thousand dollars today. I saw their, that. Uh, their share price, yeah. Yep. Wild. Yep. Good well, stuff. That's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff so, if you're an investor, that's for sure. Um, let's get into the main section since we yeah. kind of really went off topic. We've, uh, I mean, what is <laughs> what is a show for if not to show how off topic our brains Just are? Way off topic. I feel so Talking good about, if I can get y'all actually engaged in a like a tangent, <laughs> really far from what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, has anybody started projects on Hot Wheels yet? Because that's what I like. I've taken some Hot Wheels apart. Oh, like modding them. There's a Marty's Matchbox Makeover on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, it's great. Oh, I'll have to look into that. It's the most relaxing thing ever. He just takes like a, a trashed 1950s or 60s um, Matchbox car and just lovingly restores it and films the whole process. And it's the nice. same process every time. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it is super. It's a. It's yeah. that completion. Uh, somebody has called it completion porn of like. You just want to see the grimiest finish, like starting point, and then the like, the, just the finish. That's all you want. Well, this is my before picture because I have to go into work tomorrow, so I'm grimy now. Oh, so tomorrow we'll get the cut to you being like clean shaven and presentable, and as I said last time, George Clooney. I just I didn't need to bathe. You mean Fabio? Fabio. Well, it's Fabio is, is George Clooney's middle name. I don't know, I'm making up shit now, but uh, no, I mean because right now I'm wearing this hat because my hair is out of control. It's just. And uh, so this makes me look uh, professional. And by the way, I really prepared for this today. Like, this is just an undershirt that I have. You're killing it. Shaved. You're killing it. I've, I've, I've totally gone caveman. I have two of my coworkers. One told me I looked like a trucker. And the <laughs> other the others has accused me of becoming a caveman. Oh, my goodness. Brent, what were we doing? What's our main topic or something? <laughs> oh, main topic. Me like. Caveman. Um continuous part projects or a project that took way too long way too long oh man overall project creep scope or creep something simple that shouldn't have taken long but like or cascades into yeah. a disaster exactly oh man who wants to go first that was my entire 1967 mustang actually uh yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll have, to, we'll have to keep track of who went first last time, and that we we keep it rotating. Oh, we It'll can help. try. We can try. I don't know. I doesn't got really one. matter. I'm just gonna go fast. My mine was sixty. My first Mustang I bought. It's not the current one I have. It was a '67 inline six um, uh, coupe that was a former vinyl hardtop. Never buy a formal formal vinyl hardtop car. They're always rusty and leak the vinyl, which I found out. Shop and it's the car it that I did. Off. It just just stopped. Um, I, I did a, I did the, what most people do. I do, did a lot of research ahead of time. Um, I made sure I understood where rust would be in a Mustang. I was up to speed. Um, I forgot all that because I got excited and found a car and bought one that was actually much rustier than I thought it was. And I never should have bought it. Um, point in case is that that car, I had to use WD-40 on every single bolt I ever touched. It doesn't matter where it is in the car. My new Mustang, I've never had to use it once to get a single bolt off. It's amazing. But that car, I had the 67 Mustang. I had to change the thermostat. And in the process of doing that, I ended up breaking off a bolt in the block. I had none of the tools to fix that with. And so I ended up trailering the car to Ohio from Louisiana to get my uncle to help me fix it. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, that went from a small problem to a big problem. Good job. Yeah. All right. Next. <laughs> I'll jump in on this one. Uh, so, let's see, I think the best one, best worst one, let's go call it that. Um, my uh, wife's dad has a, had a Subaru, keyword had, uh, like the 2.5 XT, turbocharged 2.5 liter, great, you know. I was like, okay, cool. It's a well-documented motor. Should be no problem. Anything comes up, I can like throw a few, you know, throw an hour or two here and there. 
did his oil change for him. I think like a year and a half later goes by and we're talking and like he kind of casually drops like, oh yeah, like I need to, need to get an oil change. And we're like, oh, when was the last time you uh, did an oil change? And he goes, oh, well, uh, last time you did it. And I was like, oh, that's, that's bad. That's a bad start. <laughs> um, proceeded to get worse when he was like, oh yeah, and uh, the check engine light's on. And I was like, okay, that's real bad. Uh, come to find out, you know, do a little Google search. It turns out like, oh yeah, this motor's notorious for like the turbo, like there's like a filter on the return line or whatever. And if you don't change the oil regularly, it gunks up and causes oil starvation. Longer story short, got it all back together after much cursing and swearing at Subaru Motors. And uh, turns out, once I got oil back in it, that um, it was already too late, and the turbo was fully fully cooked and dead, and that pretty much totaled uh, totaled out that car, at least in terms of getting it done by a shop. So we sold it cheap to uh, somebody who was buying Subarus on the cheap and flipping them. So that was a bummer, and I had to be the person to deliver the bad news of like, well, it's fixable but also not by me it's easy to do a tur turbo change come on uh, it would be but it was also like a really inconvenient time like uh helen and i were uh i think it was like three or four months out from the wedding party and stuff and it was in our like the main area where the wedding party would be so it was like bad timing really bad timing not a good time to have a car project in your driveway taking up a, a slot so yeah, yeah. Right, Brent, what you got man i'll go with the time i had changed my oil <laughs> um, you're not gonna do the spark plugs in the brz that's later on come on <laughs> um so one night decided to do an oil change on the 2.5 rs and um what could possibly go wrong uh, you know, changed everything out, changed the filter, you know, everything looked okay, put oil in, started it up just to make sure, you know, no leaks or anything. And we were at, I, well, I was at my, my friend's garage doing this and he's like, all good, all good. And I'm like, something doesn't sound good. It sounded like Niagara Falls. <laughs> Oh no. I look under and it was just pouring out oil, turned it immediately off. And um, we're like, crap, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> um, it's the, the like, Tommy boy. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> it, it just did not make sense at all. Cause we, ch we tightened everything up. Like, you know what I mean? Nothing was loose out of it and nothing was like, nothing fell out on the ground, like the, the, the drain plug, anything on that order. So we, um, we had a run to Walmart at like 11 o'clock at night. Thankfully they were open because, you know, we decided to change it at, you know, 10 or so. <laughs> um, and got cat litter and oil. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. That was probably the weirdest purchase that uh, Walmart has probably seen at least at that location and um went back cleaned it up and come to find out the oil filter the o-ring the original o-ring stuck up at the block itself oh no i've heard of so, this happening yeah it it was stuck up there and basically you had two o-rings on top of each other and that's what created that gap changed it and oh man changed it a second time you're like cool after cool. that but <laughs> that was just a 30 minute project that turned into about five hours because of having to run to walmart and clean everything up and so on so yeah now i'm just lazy or like yeah. i was telling charlie earlier that are like the covid sort of like 
lack of ability to like focus and concentrate or, or, or have the inspiration to do the simplest of things. Like I was telling him that like, you know, now I have the luxury of time when I work on cars because I finally have a garage and my Mustang needs new valve cover gaskets amongst some of the other things I'm doing. And so I went to clean the gasket surface and I got discouraged to quit after like 15 or 20 minutes because it was hard. Like, you know, like scraping a little bit of oil off of something. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I have so many of those like, oh, this will only, you know, it's like, well, I read on the internet, it'll take this long. And then you're like, I, I've now learned like the first time you do that, like double it. Like just double it. It's like a lot safer. Like the the Subaru thing was like, oh yeah, it'll only take you like an hour to get those. Like the hardest part's going to get, be getting it back together. I had it apart in like 15 minutes and I was like, okay, cool. So like, probably another like power and I'm done like great no drop I've dropped every uh every uh copper uh o-ring that was there I it was like every mistake in the book it was made and it was uh yeah just so so rough like I Brent I totally empathize I'm I'm glad your your waterfall uh oil story was like the simplest fix of like, oh yeah, it's just, it doubled up an O-ring, like whatever. Uh, thankfully it was that easy, but I just, I, and then the worst part was, I mean, the garage was horribly lit. So there was like two little light bulbs in the place. Yeah. And, you know, maybe like a little flashlight and that was about it. So, I mean, yeah. when, when everything was down and, you know, drain plug was off the, original oil filter was off like everything looked fine and yeah you couldn't tell that there was an o-ring just sitting there overall yep. Yep. so yeah so, Oof. i would i would say you know anytime you're changing out an oil filter on a subaru just make sure that uh that o-ring is with the original with the original so yeah i'm like low-key curious now if y'all can hear what's going on in the background my my dogs are playing in the other room and making a shitload of noise so <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and formally apologize to the podcast and everybody listening uh you can barely hear it cool, cool. Uh, that's all right <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was uh i was thinking you know the other day we talked about you know like a motto or something like that for you know, trying to come up with an idea of one or something for the show or whatever and you know we've got strap in in the uh in the intro is pretty obvious but i really like the idea of the phrase what could possibly go wrong <laughs> i mean it's a good it's a good one because we, yeah. we used it in the original audio podcasts you know and it always comes up now i know it was in top gear though they did say that like don't you like 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 clarkson would say what could possibly go wrong and hammond's like don't say that you know they would you know but it's just beautiful it's a beautiful thing i don't know yeah uh the best laid plans right yeah that's, I was that, thinking about something while we were talking, guys. I was like, you know, like Volkswagens, like they don't always have the best reputation for quality. Like if you listen to, especially Ben Kenobi. Oh my God. He goes on and on about these things. And then but he, like. But then he goes and buys another one. Right. And then he goes and buys another one. And that's my point. That's what Which I'm like, saying. I love and it. Then, I love it. And then like, you know, like Brent is in the Subarus with the horizontally opposed engines and you had your spark plug fun ex exciting time or I guess they're not called spark plugs or the like coil packs or some crap whatever. Oh there's spark um, plugs. Oh there's spark plugs. Yeah, it was spark plugs. It's okay, not a diesel. Okay. There's there's no coil right. plug. But then you have and so basically like a Subaru if you're into Subaru is doing anything on the engine is annoying because it's different and it's stuff's pointing at frame rails and and then like my dad has an arc seven which means rotary. Um and then I like old cars too. And, you know, frankly, you know, what is it like? They're not literally objectively good at anything. <laughs> Think about it. They're not actually measurably demonstrably good at anything, but I love my old car. You know, uh, you know, you love your VWs. I love VWs too. Um, Brent digs the Subarus. My dad loves his RX-7. Like, it's amazing to think that like people become so loyal to something that may not actually be that objectively good. And I was just, that thought occurred to me while we all were talking earlier. Um, anyway. Yeah. 
Why do people I mean, like feel, cars that aren't actually objectively good? I mean, I feel like uh, I feel like it depends because right? it's like, affordable. Affordable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also like well, I don't yeah. know. I, as much as Ben gripes about his, like I think it it all depends. Like right, like I think for most people, maybe like a Volkswagen's not a great fit if you're not prepared to deal with quirks. You know, like I feel like Doug Demiro talks quirks and features, whatever. Like. You mean, oh, you mean Ben's distant cousin? I swear oh my God. Related. <laughs> but go ahead. He hates when I say that. Cold. It's cold-blooded. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh, any Volkswagen, any value car, I feel like has its quirks, right? Where you're just like, oh, that's like, yes, it could have been designed better, but also it was this price. Like, they're, you know, like you can only ask so much for the value you get from a vehicle i guess and like if you accept that from like a cost engineering type standpoint i you know i know i have some probably advantage of like trying to understand that and like empathize with with automakers for that where it's like oh yeah like you know subaru's picked what it's got because it's got those motors sheet they're already made and like so they're gonna keep putting them in stuff that they're made so a toyota corolla is objectively good yeah it doesn't break I, down, but that doesn't make it passionate, passionate, right? It's an XRS, which we've discussed. I'm, I'm sure someone out there really loves their 2010 Bays Champagne Corolla Camry, whatever, with the uh, gold badges, the, the sure. limited. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure someone. I'm sure there's an. an at this point, I'm like, I've been in the car world long enough, where I can say like. I think there's probably a group of people who are like in, enthused about them. I just love uh, that there was that phase where, where car manufacturers would call something limited, yeah, primarily Toyota, and they'd make the badging gold as if and they would make more and sell more. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you got the limited gold badge? Oh, shit. Brent, Throw another $100 what on. Own, what car do you own is, it, that is objectively not good, but you still love it? Why? And why do you love it? Both. The Subaru and the Mini. <laughs> like, I mean, you you can say about the Mini, it's a BMW engine. It's basically all BMW now in a form of a Mini Cooper. I, I mean, BMWs have their issues too, just like VW and everybody else. So that's how I'm looking at it. It's yeah. as long as somebody, at, at least to me, as long as you keep on top of maintenance and you know treating the car well it will treat you well in the long run too i also think there are very few objectively bad like in the i feel like years ago there were objectively bad cars like objectively bad cars would come out like uh you know what was the one that fucking um it was like unsafe at any speed. Uh, oh yeah, but wasn't it actually not objectively bad? The, Cor well, the Corvair, like, it, yeah, I think it still had that like, it still had the very cr the critical defect of like the gas tank issue at low speeds and like a low speed collision could ignite. Um, you know, that's kind of objectively bad, but like, you know, the motor like, I would say very few cars now like I feel like are in the that realm of like, oh, like the motor blew before 60,000 miles. Like that's an objectively bad car. I'm thinking car. objectively bad would be the regular Ford Focus with that automatic transmission that was like everyone even oh, yeah. it was bad and they finally admitted it. Like, yes, that would be an object. Yeah, I would yeah. say, yeah, that's a bad car. Yeah. Um, I feel like even like, I feel like the PT Cruiser was like, that was a bad car. Like no, like there's no. Not the turbo with the wood side wood stuff. That no, was still bad. Of art. Still bad. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to change, change your mind about that. Still bad. Uh, bad cars. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think we live in a. Oh. You know, there's something to be said about like we are living in probably like the golden age of the internal combustion engine, and there's not all like what was it? Mercedes put out a four cylinder put that's, you know, from factory that's like over 350, 400 or something like that. That was that hatch thing that was kind of expensive. Yeah, it's the uh, A45. It's like the mm -hmm. Golf R competitor. 
um, yeah, it's monster. It's it's a four cylinder. Like, come on. Like, I know you can do that in the aftermarket, but like to do that from the uh, factory is like bonkers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And to actually have a warranty on it too. Yeah. Yeah. To warranty that, I'm like, ooh, like, <laughs> like if I was in Europe and that was available, and I had like cash to just blow and like be pretentious as fuck. Um, might as well. Yeah. Might as well. Like, but. I don't, so I have a Volkswagen. Did you guys see the um, the lease deal that Hyundai was doing on the Ionic? No. What, what are you referring to? It was a thousand dollars down and seventy nine dollars a month. Sounds about right. I mean, it's uh, an appliance. Yeah, but it's, so that you, would be that's a, that's awesome, man. I mean, like just th just think that is that is cheaper than some cell phone payments now. It's it's right, and also like I would say majority of cell phone payments. Like Charlie, not I, your commute, and not and not Brent's when he is when he is up and running. Um, but like my commute's a fairly typical commute. Okay, it's like thirteen miles. Okay, right. Yeah. Like I could. Is that your dog again? The, yeah. The, um, I didn't know if it was there or here. But, oh, um, she's yep. She's back there. Oh, she's back there. Um, is the uh, you know seventy nine dollars a month? I mean, that's like what I would pay in gas a month. Yeah. So it's kind of free in a way, like yeah. other than getting the charger installed. I mean, and even then, like technically, if you're just charging overnight, you could potentially just, you know, top up overnight and probably yeah. not even need to install the charger. I've got a 30 amp plug, which would be enough to get twice normal. Flow, yeah. You know, so I, I was just, I was really intrigued by that for a minute. It's almost like if I didn't have a note still on the Fiesta, I was like seriously considering it because I was like, if I didn't have a note on the Fiesta, that would I could take the Fiesta and start to preserve it a bit. I don't intend to like put it on a shelf or anything. Sure, but like to me, he's gonna put it in a bubble. Like, I could actually might fit on a shelf. He's gonna get that like little hurricane bubble and just like have it inflated at all times in cases I know wood shot falls around. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I, uh, and I do. I, I, I'm actually entertaining the idea of. And this is a great question for both y'all. Are either of you entertaining the idea of keeping your main current car, the Mark Seven or the Mini, for decades? Yes. Interesting. Nope. Why and why not? I'll let you leave. Um, because there's other things that we would like. I mean, my project car is the Subaru overall. Um, and I know viewers out there don't know about this, but we're planning to move up to Seattle soon uh, within the next couple of years. So um, at that point, the mini would be paid off for and we will probably get a Tesla model three or a model Y at that point um, as like the main vehicle. We can use it for long distance travel stuff on that order. Um, and we may keep the mini since it would be paid off just so she would have another car mm -hmm. or because naturally she wouldn't I'd, want to drive the tesla she would um but i don't i don't know yet because i'm you know we've talked about the electric mini that just came out the mini cooper e or whatever the um the electric version of it we've talked about that but i think it's better off in a big city we aren't going to be living in seattle itself we're still going to have a big commute to seattle if we go um so like if we stayed in los angeles it would be a different story we would be definitely looking at the mini cooper e um i've brought up a subaru cross track hybrid where it's got the electric side and gas side and supposedly it gets about 480 miles to a tank nice. um that so might basically be you're saying else. like your your subaru is sort of where your passion is and your mini is filling a slot in the lineup that's an appliance but it's a fun appliance don't get me wrong i'm not knocking the car or anything but like that's just the position it's holding but for charlie I know for me with the Fiesta, the reason I'm considering keeping it is because it's the la it doesn't have any nannies. It doesn't change lanes for you. It doesn't have launch control and all the crazy start stop stuff. Not that it's necessarily bad in the new Fiesta ST, but it's sort of like the last of the real Fiesta STs, in my opinion, 
or an, analog e ish analog ish so that's what i'm kind of fascinated with the idea of keeping it and it's a manual too so why are you considering keeping the uh, gti is it sentimentality or is it like a mechanical thing uh, a little bit of both i think um i mean you touched on some good points uh analog driving experience like it's not truly an analog by any stretch of the imagination. It's, you know, it's not a hydraulic rack. It's a fully electric rack. Um, but the steering feels good. I think it's, you know, there's a reason why it won like the 2015 car of the year or whatever, like on a bunch of things. And like, there's a reason why the GTI is like so favorably looked upon in the hot hatch world. Um, it is a formula that it has been done pretty well. Um, and two doors uh it is like the last volkswagen with two doors right now um so that's kind of cool and is it the first new car you bought or was your diesel it was it was the first brand new car i bought so i bought i did buy the diesel used yeah Um, yeah, yeah. but there's uh, something to say for that too like i've got sentimentality with the fiesta yeah there was a big life moment you know doing that like it's an accomplishment you know yeah and like i feel like i've also done a lot of things to like make the Volkswagen kind of mine. So like the brakes, the head unit, um, the Hello Kitty sticker. Yeah. The Hello Kitty sticker. Um, I mean, like it's, it's just the car at this point I know inside and out and I kind of plan for it to like plan for it to be a longer, uh, ownership. Vehicle. There's always N plus one. Exactly. There exactly. Like it's going to be paid off next year, um, entirely. So like, it's just going to be chilling and uh you know we have an old volvo that like gets relegated for uh the occasional like dog trip use to the park and rally cross yeah you know and whenever it snows or whatever like it's it's in good enough condition that it gets me around town in uh in less than great weather um but eventually we'll probably get rid of that and either we'll go to one car or um you know something electric to like bop around town um but yeah i mean like right now you know i think you rightly pointed out like our commute is like pretty much like oh yeah like could you know if we were without you know two cars we'd be fine so um which is nice because that just puts us in a spot where we're you know similar to brent saving money for a house and stuff like that so well hey um to everyone watching you know uh, this is the this is about time to wrap it up here. So we've got the um, second episode under our belts, you know, and, and for those of you that wrote out, you know, the audio only podcast, those finely crafted things, um, you know, you know, keep, thank you and keep sticking with us um, to our yeah. Belgian fans. Uh, we love you. Um, we love you. Um, but, uh, you know, it's great hanging out with you guys and to everyone out there, you know, keep tuning in, you know, we've got um spotify um we're, we're also on itunes and any other thing i'm forgetting brent just youtube just the youtube oh that old thing that, oh yeah that just one that, <laughs> just that old thing where everybody yeah. can see our faces you know yeah well look guys we uh we appreciate you tuning in and uh yeah hang in there see you next yeah. time see you next time see you If you enjoyed Dag Show, please like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. We are also available on iTunes and Spotify by searching for Delusions of Automotive Grandeur. Thanks again for tuning in. And as always, may the grandeur of your automobiles be delusional. Wait, man, is he going to say two and one? Is it, like, isn't that what what happens to two and one? Yeah. <laughs> That's Bill and the Ted's, recording. There's a new Bell and Ted's trailer. Oh, we're recording. Oh, shit. Are we we're recording? <laughs> oh, shit. Act oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, I didn't act like I didn't just fall out of my seat. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs>